Hi friends, my name is Prem Asimjan and today we learn about the channels which is a very important topic and a little bit complex to understand in Go. So uh, those who have not seen the last video, I'll just give a quick recap. So what we did is uh, the channel would essentially work with the Go routines. So the main purpose of channel is to set up the communication between the uh, Go routines like the child routine. So uh, as we know that the, there is a main function uh, which will uh, go sequentially, but when you have to do parallelism or concurrency, that means you would uh, like to run uh, the programs in uh, different asynchronous process and they'll finish on their own and then they can provide the output. So it's non-blocking because if you go sequentially, like in this example, if you go sequentially, First thing will finish first, then it would wait, it would get blocked, then second would run, and then third. Uh, something like, uh, you know, the sequential. So what we did is uh, just to make it uh, a Go routine, we uh, put a Go keyword there. And when we were running this, let me run this. So as soon as we run this program, uh, it would uh, basically, uh, it's not finishing all of them. Uh, because there is no communication between the main. So main spins up the other uh, child go routines or child processes or threads. But as soon as main is done, main think, okay, I'm done. Let me exit. So all the other go routines were unfinished. So uh, what's the way uh, to tell main, say, hey, wait, and uh, tell the time. You need to communicate with your go routines. So this is where the concept of channel comes. So what channel would do is, uh, uh, it is a link between the main uh, routine and the child go routine so that they can communicate and you can stop it whenever you want, like as expected. So how to establish this, we'll look in the code and then we'll understand. But the main purpose of channel, like in short, is to establish the communication between the main routine and the go routines so how that is done so first thing is let's create a variable called as channel and then we would use the invoke the main main uh, if you have a slice or anything you can initialize with the empty stuff so you can make a channel uh, so you can make a channel of type string so this is how it is done. Now understand channel, you can think that when you go to the toll booth, you are on a highway with two lane. But at time when, uh, you know, things get slowed, uh, then you have the toll booth with nine different uh, lanes, right? And then uh, in the queue, you get distributed, you pay, and then again, you connect and go. So same thing in a long program, you are running sequentially here you're creating different lanes like concurrent lanes or parallel so that they get finished, they communicate through the channel and then uh, the message get passed. But that channel has to be of some specific type. It could be string or int or whatever. So whenever you are creating that, just make sure that whatever the message you are passing in the channel, that would be the type. Now, uh, channel, you can think of it as a queue. So you can put something in the channel at one end and first in, first out, at the other end, the message would be retrieved. Just like the wireless, we have a lot of police around and then they communicate through the wireless and then, hey, everything is okay, let that guy go. So they'll let it go. Otherwise they will hold him there. So um, this is when you create a channel and now you have to receive the message from a channel. So you would say you have a message one and then you are assigning a value from channel one. So So this variable, so this is a typical keyword which is used if, so if you have to put something in the channel, you would use this keyword and if you have to retrieve, then only you have to use this kind of symbol. So before we put it here, let me just print this thing out. 
so we say fmt dot print ln and message one so that everything is all set correct now let's run this so i'm not doing anything here i'm just uh, having this channel and then uh, i'm trying to retrieve the message from the channel and printing it but the problem is uh, there is a deadlock and why this deadlock happened is uh, so our normal routine and go routines they all ran and we were expecting a message from a channel and no one actually put it there and the main kept on waiting in a deadlock because all the go routines were finished they were done and nothing came up so that's why it executed in abruptly so uh, how would the go routine know about the channel and how they can convey their message back so we need to make a little bit modification here. So this is our go routine, like any normal function where you have a normal, normal string arguments. Now you have to pass a channel. So you can say C, which is of type channel and it accepts string. So now you have a simple, you know, channel opened up. So in the channel you can, so you have a message. Let's first create the message. So your message is your s plus is done now this message you need to put inside a channel so what you would do is you would put it in the c and that's it so you have accepted a c a channel and you're putting the value in the channel once you're done with your function so as soon as you are done you would say okay so when it is getting invoked three times or ten times or how many whatever number of times it would leave the message in the channel and then uh, that message can be retrieved from here so this this guy would wait uh, until and unless it doesn't get the message that is why we were getting this issue last time because we were expecting message and message was not coming now let's fix this so we have to pass the channel as argument in all our functions or our go routines so now we are all set do you expect this to happen again the deadlock let's see so this time the uh, condition is different uh, we actually pass down the message right but we put three values in the queue for the channel and then we retrieved only one so this guy was now waiting for other two times like whenever the other two times that go routine was sending so just to make it simple let's try to do it this way so now we will we are calling it couple of times and then we are reading the message couple of times so the queue is empty everything is all good and then i believe the program should run fine as expected so let's run this and bingo so this is a normal uh, termination of the program so let me summarize this again uh, so what we did is uh, uh, there is a main routine and then there are co uh, routines like the child routines so to establish communication what was happening is uh, once go routine doesn't know what uh, when these guys are finishing up this will terminate and program might abruptly finish without even getting the output of this so to facilitate this we have the channel so each channel whatever the uh, routine child uh, go routine is done finishing it would send out a message in the channel we established the channel up front so that uh, main passes the channel to the child routine and child routine once it done it acknowledges back to the main so this is how we are acknowledging or sending the message so this uh, symbol uh, whatever you put here so this is a type string then you have to put string in the channel otherwise a number so uh, this uh, here it's a number you are putting it in the channel and you're retrieving it like this you can directly also retrieve it like you don't have to uh, hold it in some you know intermediate variables so this was the quick summary and this was the quick program 
i hope uh, you got the concept of uh, mm, the go routines and uh, the channels thanks for watching if you like the video please like it